Okay, so I'm going to be reading Kyle Odom's Manifesto. Who is Kyle Odom? Born and raised in North Idaho, grew up in a loving family, joined the Marine Corps after high school, developed an interest in science, went to school for a degree in biochemistry, won numerous scholarships and awards, graduated magna cum laude, don't know how to pronounce that, and then got invited to a prestigious university to work on genetics. Check my personal documents. As you can see, I'm pretty smart. I'm also 100% sane, 0% crazy. Why did he do it? My life was ruined. Ruined by an intelligent species of amphibian humanoid, of amphibian humanoid from Mars. I wish I was joking. Keep reading. They were here long before we ever existed. Their technology is millions of years more advanced than ours. I've seen them do things that defy all comprehension. They have a massive breeding stock of humans, which they breed and control from birth. They use these humans to live vicarious lives among us. They appear to be completely normal because they're good at in imitating human behavior. See Martian technology for an explanation on this. The actual Martians live deep underground here and inside of the moon. They take control of wild human beings and use them as sex slaves. Don't believe me? Ask President Obama to take a lie detector test on this one. They tried to take me, but they were unable to control my mind. They've been following me ever since. I tried everything to get my life back. I begged, bargained, and I threatened. Everything I tried to do was sabotage. I attempted suicide twice, but they stopped me both times. My last resort was to take actions that would bring it to the public's attention. Read my story to learn what happened to me and why they targeted me. My story. Everything I started, everything started while I was working at the University of Idaho. Spring 2014 was my final semester and I was taking a heavy course load, see transcript. I was very stressed due to the intensity of my schedule, so I searched for a way to cope. I discovered meditation, which seemed to help me, so it became part of my daily routine. As I learned more about meditation, I became interested in consciousness and our ability to affect it. I kept working on medication techniques, meditation techniques, and began achieving extreme states of consciousness. This continued until I encountered another being through meditation. It happened one Friday night in February 2014, and it was the most profound experience I've ever had. I was lying in a bed meditating, then suddenly my left suddenly left my physical body. I entered a space that was completely dark and I had no awareness of my physical boundaries orientation. I felt very peaceful and there was until there was a blue light which began to approach me. As the blue light got closer, I realized it was another being. Once I was in the being's presence, I felt an immediate sense of wrongdoing. It felt like I was being told you shouldn't be here. I instantly conceded and felt guilty. Then I began to distance myself from the being. This had an impact on them, and it seemed to change their mind about me. The moment I began to distance myself from the being, I had become overwhelmed by a feeling I can only describe as unconditional love. During this part of the experience, our minds became connected, and I saw that the being was female. I then began to feel the most euphoric, comforting, and blissful feelings I have ever felt. It was incredibly powerful and life-altering. Next thing I knew, I wake up. I woke up. I had tears in my eyes. I couldn't get out of the bed. I felt a profound sense of loss, like I just lost someone close to me. It was very painful. A few minutes later, the experience left my mind against my will and I went about my day. After that, I had no urge to meditate at all. Every time I even thought about meditation, the thought was stripped from my mind. When I finally did try meditating again, I was unable to achieve anything. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I knew it wasn't going to improve. Ultimately, I decided to give up on the meditation and just focus on my classes. The remainder of the semester became exceedingly easy for me. It felt like I tapped into some kind of power. I was exerting no mental effort, even though the class had been extremely difficult before. I also began to have complex thoughts and deep understanding I had never reached before. After a mo about a month later, I started interviewing at the graduate schools I applied to. Shortly after the interviews were done, I started receiving offers. 
I decided to accept the offer from the Bayer College of Medicine to work on a PhD in human genetics. I was very excited about the opportunity to work at such a prestigious university. The future looked bright and I couldn't wait to get started. Everything changed once I started the program. The moment I arrived, I could see flaws in every professor's research. My mind was so expanded that I could instantly understand the implications of entire research projects. Because of this, I was able to see the weaknesses in all the available points. This caused me to become very concerned about what I was doing and I felt I was wasting my time. I voiced my concerns to my advisor and he casually brushed them aside. He told me, just have fun, it'll be fun. I kept trying to get motivated, but things continued to get worse. I started seeing flaws in the foundation of genetics and other fields. It got to the point where I couldn't stop thinking about them. To make things worse, no one else seemed to care, <coughs> which really bothered me. All these issues made it impossible for me to continue, so I decided to leave. <coughs> the day after I decided to my leave, the day after I decided to leave, my life became a living hell. I couldn't sleep, and my mind felt sapped. I was entirely at peace with my decision, so I knew something strange was happening to me. After a few days of this, two of the graduate students began reaching out to me. Blank and blank, I barely knew them, so it seemed unusual that they would contact me. <coughs> when I went to see them, they both kept pointing their finger at me, saying pew pew, like they were shooting a gun. They did this over and over again, and I kept wondering what their problem was. Once after I left Susan, I saw that blank and blank were not human. They were tasked with making me into the next school shooter, as they called it. Imagine this is why many of our school shootings took place. Anyway, things slowly began to slowly improved after I stopped talking with blank and blank, but I was mentally exhausted. I tried to figure out what to do in my life, but I could hardly think. Eventually I left Texas and started applying for jobs all over the country. A few months later, things took a strange turn. In spring 2015, I finally secured an interview with a food company. I thought I was about to get something going in my life, but I was wrong. I couldn't sleep at all night, all night, the night before the interview. I literally stayed awake for the entire night, which had never happened to me before. I looked unrecognizable in the mirror the next morning, and my mind felt sapped worse than I had in Tuesday, worse than I had in Houston. Needless to say, the interview didn't go well. I couldn't think and I had extreme difficulty with normal conversation and the, after the interview was over I suddenly felt and looked perfectly normal. I slept great that night and made my way to the airport the next morning. This is where the story gets weird. On the plane ride back home my seat was taken. I asked a flight attendant as she directed me to, to a new seat. Once I sat down an older gentleman in front of me kept glancing back until he got my attention. As he kept looking back my head began to hurt and tingle. The moment my head began to hurt, his lips curled and he into this evil looking smile. The pain and tingling in my head continued for the rest of the flight and got more intense as time went on. Every time I felt the man would start taking notes every time I felt that the man would start taking notes in a notepad. At halfway through the flight, someone else in front of me held up a newspaper that said psychic reading for like five minutes straight. It was blatantly obviously they were doing something to me, but I didn't know what. Once we landed the older gentleman kept showing me his track phone as to say get one of these <coughs> I, I had applied to several government agencies before this happened so they thought this might be their way of contacting me out of curiosity I decided to go and buy a track phone I checked it every day to see if any messenger called about a month later I got a message from a man named John Padula he invited me to come to church at the altar it seemed like a strange place to be recruiting for government jobs but I went anyway after I got there and went inside, something felt very wrong. I felt as if my life was in danger and I became so uncomfortable I had to leave. A couple of days later, I started receiving text messages from Tim Remington. At first, they were innocuous Bible messages, but then they started threatening me. He sent messages talking about their power and other things. He did all of this through Bible verses so it would not look suspicious. I ignored everything he sent until one final text message which simply said angels. I thought nothing of it until helicopters started flying around my house all day and night. At this point I knew I was in trouble. I knew I had to contact them, so I made an appointment to meet John Padula for coffee. Little did I know he had no intention of meeting me. After making the appointment to meet John, something very bizarre happened. I received the most unnatural blank I have ever had. It felt as like someone was 
pump, manually pumping blood into my blank and I don't know how else to describe it. Immediately after this, the song began playing in my mind. The lyrics went, sister, sister, he's just a plaything. We want to make him stay up all night. I'd never heard this song before and I had no idea what it meant. I tried to ignore it and keep searching for jobs. A few minutes later, the song quit playing. Nothing else happened until I tried to sleep that night. As soon as I got into bed, the song started again. Sister, sister, he's just a plaything. We want to make him stay up all night. As it turned out, they weren't kidding. I got literally zero minutes of sleep that night. Every time I started to drift off, I was woken up violently, but then the song would play. When the song came up, I gave up on trying to sleep and get out of bed. I was relieved at first because the song had quit playing. I thought the torture was over until a voice entered my mind. The voice said, you're going to be uncomfortable. All you have to do is breathe. I sat there, wondering what this meant, until the voice spoke again. It told me I was going to be sacrificed like Jesus and get beheaded. This threw me into complete panic. My heart began racing and I started to have a mental breakdown. A few minutes later, some man knocked on my door. I answered. He gave a pamphlet talking about the sacrifice of Jesus. My mind started racing out of control and I became completely delirious. I thought for sure I was going to die. My thoughts shifted to my family and all I could think about was seeing them again. They were in Albuquerque at the time, so I decided so I decided to buy a one-way ticket there. When I reached the Spokane airport, my panic subsided. Everything was fine until I got to the plane to Albuquerque. I sat next to this man who was telling me telepathically that he was going to crash the plane. Every time he spoke, he would sniff emphatically. I didn't know what to do, so I just sat there trying to stay as calm as possible. The man became angry about this and started touching my leg. The second he touched me, I could feel inside my mind. Feel him inside my mind. This caused me to panic until I was on the verge of causing a scene. Before I did anything, he told me to calm down and said, "You did a great job. You passed. Go enjoy your family. We have a job waiting for you when you get back." I thanked him and I felt slightly re- relieved, but I had no intention of contacting him at all. My only thought was to get as far away from him as possible. After getting off the plane, I headed to the baggage claim. A huge group of them surrounded me there. I watched them cautiously, but then they began sniffing at me. The sniff is something they do all the time. It has something to do with the dominance. When I finally got my bag, I left the airport as fast as I could. My parents were right outside waiting to pick me up. I was so happy to see them again. I gave them big hugs and told them how much I loved them. This was my last happy moment in Albuquerque, however. They followed us everywhere we went after that. Whenever I saw one, they would sniff at me and let me know it was them. They'd also smile and stick their tongues out. As time went on, they started coaxing me to go outside alone. (coughs) I was scared to death they would kill me, so I refused. Eventually, they threatened to harm my family, which caused me to give in to them. I told them I would do whatever they want if they left my family alone. They just wanted to go to church. I knew they meant the altar, so I agreed to go when I got back. When I went to the altar for the first time, the people acted very strange. It was unhuman. As I walked into the sermon room, everyone stared at me and began sniffing emphatically. Needless to say, I was scared as hell, but I took a seat. When the service began, a man came and sat down next to me. After we sat down, I began smelling something. It was a smell I never smelled before. The only thing I can compare it to is reptile and vinegar. After smelling it, I became very uncomfortable. I tried to calm down and sit there quietly until the service was over. When the service ended, they said, you can leave now. After that, I knew I wasn't dealing with the government anymore. I knew whoever I was dealing with was extraterrestrial, so I became very scared. I received no further instructions from them after that, so I began applying for jobs again. Even though I had done exactly as I was told, they still followed me everywhere I went. As time went on, they started harassing me day and night. I began to hear voices more and more and I began to hallucinate things that I knew weren't real. They also started playing with me sexually. Both the males and the females would play out their sexual fantasies in my mind. This came with random and uncontrollable blank as well as extreme blank stimulation. The harassment continued for weeks and intensified as time went on. I did my absolute best to maintain sanity and and tried to avoid them. This worked for a while but I eventually had a huge meltdown. One day I was in the bakery at Safeway when I got surrounded by a bunch of old men. Some of them looked at me me and sniffed so I knew it was them. 
They started stealing my blank and blank simultaneously, and they spoke aggressively. They said humans are nothing more than a result of a successful genetic experiment. You are a threat to the way these people think, and you can no longer be free in society. Your life is over. You're anything but a toy. Your purpose is now to suck blank. They continued to say other explicit things that were obscene. I wouldn't repeat here. Before they started talking, before they finished talking, I became enraged. Took every ounce of willpower I had not to kill them. I left the store and tried to calm down, but it only got worse. The rest of the night, they continually stimulated blank, and I couldn't stop blank. It got to the point where I was in serious pain. They finally stopped after I broke down and had been completely distraught. I knew I couldn't take care anymore, so I attempted suicide. I filled a charcoal grill with the calls, put it in my car and rolled up the windows. I reclined in my seat, laid there comfortably, calmly, and then fell asleep. I should have died, but they woke me up in extreme panic, which caused me to get out of the car. As I slowly regained consciousness, I felt very upset to still be alive. I had no clue where to go at this point, so I decided to check myself into the VA. They shipped me straight to the mental ward and I was admitted. Nothing improved while I was there. The medication they gave me did absolutely nothing. I just sat there surrounded by a bunch of psychotic people and became exasperated. I knew their goal was to ruin my life by making it to me a crazy person. <coughs> I became determined not to let that happen when I started fighting back again. After leaving the VA, everything I tried to do in my life was sabotage. They didn't want me dead, but they weren't. They also weren't going to let me live. In desperation, I went to the altar to ask them what they wanted from me. I didn't know what else to do. <coughs> the response was, we want you as our sex slave. Thinking they were serious, I started waiting for them to do something. All they did was say, keep coming to church. So I did. After a few more services, I found myself talking to Tim Remington face to face. He was telling me that I should consider becoming a minister. We were in mid-conversation when he suddenly re revealed himself to me. I have no clue how he did it, but it looked as if his human face became his real face. It happened for only one to two seconds, but I was unable to draw. But I was able to draw a sketch of what I saw. His eyes really stood out, and so they captured my attention. They were huge and bulging. Like the eyes were darker green, and the irises were yellow brown with slit pupils. After witnessing this, nothing else happened. I continued attending the altar for a few more services, waiting for them to do something. They did nothing except for telling me to submit and surrender. I had no clue what they meant, so I left the church and never went back. After leaving the altar, they gave me some breathing room. They held back on their harassment and I began to recover. I decided to make one final attempt at normal life by pursuing a career as a pharmacist. I started taking classes at NIC to finish up the prereqs I needed. I also started volunteering at a local pharmacy. Unfortunately, they followed me to school. There were several of them in every class I took. They made it impossible for me to study, and they continually harassed me, especially while I took tests. Even with all this going on, I still somehow managed to get an A in a and during the final semester. Sadly, my success was short-lived. The pressure this semester, spring 2016, is far too intense. Every time I go to class, they start manipulating my brain until I go into a blind rage. Sometimes they suppress my brain until I black out. They also manipulate my heart rate and flood my blood with adrenaline over and over again, making me extremely uncomfortable. The females stimulate blank when they are close and the male singing a blank it's incredibly exhausting i struggled to pass my test so they couldn't blame so they couldn't blame this on me for following at school i want to continue but i simply cannot every moment i spend in the classroom is absolute torture the class themselves are extremely difficult without this all this with, with without all this added pressure the worst is i ever seized an interview for isu's pharmacy program since i cannot continue with the classes there is no reason to go to the interview my chance at a normal life has been ruined. They've also been depriving me of sleep, so I don't have the strength to continue. I was too smart for my own good, so they decided to remove me from society. They were worried I might change the way other people think, which could lead to problems. Problems in the form of scientific revolutions. If we get much smarter species, we're going to become a threat to their existence. If you talk to me in person, you'll see that I'm not crazy at all. The Martians are just good at, so good at hiding in plain sight that no one knows they exist until they reveal themselves. They're able to fool us so well that what I'm saying sounds impossible. However, they are 100% real. Realize our technology is millions of years more advanced than ours. Think about that for a second. 
think about the advancement we've made in the past hundred years. Once you've done that, try to imagine what a million years of technology would look like. The president is well aware of them, which is why I wrote him a personal letter. I hope there's something about it. I've done nothing wrong to deserve what's happened to me. I tried literally everything to find a job and they sabotaged me at every corner. Initially, I thought the right thing to do was to kill myself. After attempting suicide twice, it became clear they weren't going to let me die easy. My last resort was to take actions to bring this to the public's attention. I hope something good comes of it. Just realise that I'm a good person and I'm completely innocent. Also realise that the people I killed are not what you think. To make it very clear, Tim and John were not human, wild human beings. Wild humans equal normal people like you and my, me. Tim and John equal minds are controlled from birth by Martians. It's hard to imagine, I know. Nonetheless, it's all true. Why well, would give up a career as a pharmacist just to do this? I left out many details from my story. I want to write only the most critical events in order to make it coherent. If you want to know more, like how I discovered there are multiple scenes, species of them, feel free to write me. Q&A. Why would the aliens hide in a church? Same reason terrorists hide in mosques. If you're going to do very bad things and want to avoid getting caught, you'll put up a front to make yourself look like a good person. How do I know about their technology? I've seen them use it, and they've talked to me to, about it. This is how I learned that their breeding is stuck, that there is all about this. This is also how I learned about their breeding stock of remote control humans. <coughs> Physically, their humans, their humans are no different than us. They just lack a mind of their own. Why would they tell you so much? They value me because I'm smart. They were also very confident that I, I could take, they could take control of my mind. Turns out they couldn't. Anyway. In the interim, some of us developed a personal relationship. They are very arrogant, so they tell me much more than they should have. This allowed me to understand some of the things they can do. What else have you seen? I've seen them make things appear out of nowhere. One time I was sitting on a church, a couch, and a dollar bill appeared on my lap. <coughs> Another time while driving, they made a paper bag appear in my passenger seat. They used random, unsuspecting items, so no one would think anything of it. It was alone, but I was alone both times it happened. I'm pretty sure they can pop in and out of this dimension based on the things I've seen. I'm also pretty sure they can overlap our reality with an alternate dimension. I say this because I've gone to stores where I know the employees and suddenly there are all new employees who I've never seen before. Some of the other things they seen are some of the other things I've seen are strange. I literally cannot describe them. This all makes sense though. Their technology is millions of years ahead of ours, so it should should be incomprehensible to us. Why do they target you? They started following me after I encountered them through meditation. So my mind was so expanded from the experience, they deemed me a threat to the rest of society. They thought I would change the way people think, so they decided to remove me from society. I began to have profound thoughts about genetics while I was at the graduate school, which is another factor. If certain ways of thinking are allowed to exist, revolutions will take place. They could not afford for us to have a revolution in genetics. If we did, we would eliminate diseases, cancers, and many other things that plague us. They just need, they need us to remain ignorant and continue struggling, otherwise we will become a threat to them. Mr. President, I want to thank you for your sacrifice to the country. It's very upsetting to hear about you talk about the things they do to you. It's very upsetting to hear you talk about the things they do to you. Why do you let them? I suppose I have no other choice. I've been struggling with them myself for over a year now. I had nothing to lose, so I chose this and said, I can never tolerate that much abuse. I hope you don't take their threats too seriously. Everything is a game to them. Realize they consider the human race a plaything, including you. They brag to me about what they do to you. I'm, already, I'm sure you already know, but he doesn't love you. Their brains don't even work like that. I don't know you personally, but they've shown me a lot about you. You're an amazing person. I hope you stop, I hope you, I hope you stop letting them humiliate you. Why be afraid to retaliate? Kennedy wasn't. It's time someone took a stand to end this nonsense. Can you think of a better legacy than that? What's well, worse, having everyone know the reality of the situation or watching some of our best and brightest become slaves? I wish you the very best with the remainder of your presidency. If you're still in there, stay strong. Martian brain and behavior. I've observed their behavior for almost a year. Consequently, I've been able to make several deductions about them. The first deduction is based on their primary characteristics, which include that one, they're hypersexual, two, they're hyperaggressive, Three, they are fearful and paranoid. In the human brain, the amygdala is responsible for all these characteristics. Therefore, Martians must have an analogous structure and must be greatly enlarged. 
the morphology of the brain is so markedly different than ours. I know this because I've seen what amphibian humans look like. The males are extremely aggressive. In their society, there's only one thing, and that is power. Whereas the smartest, biggest, and strongest wins. One time, I was talking to a young male who kept trying to intimidate, scare me. He saw that I was still confident in myself and immediately became discouraged. He stopped what he was doing and said, You think you're better than me? Then hung his head and walked away. I told him that wasn't true, but uh, he wouldn't listen. After this, every time I encountered one of the males in public, they would attack me mentally until they destroyed my self esteem. They did this because they are scared to death of my intelligence. The only way they have the, the only way they have the confidence to talk to me is if I'm scared for my life uh, or completely despondent. To the males, everything is black or white. There's no middle ground. They are power hungry, megalomaniacs, obsessed with control. If they're not 100% control of your situation, they panic. If something happens they're not anticipating, they get very upset. They hate surprises. I know it's because I was smart enough to trick them a few times. To recap, the males are megalomaniacal, obsessed with sex, extremely aggressive, feel for, feel for, fearful and paranoid, power hungry, obsessed with control. Sound familiar? Who else do you think has these characteristics? If you answer God from the Bible, you are, contra- you are correct. Martians are responsible for the God myth. Martians may have created humans, as they claim, but they are certainly not gods themselves. They are just another intelligent species that evolved on a neighboring planet. There is no God. There is no heaven. There is no hell. Earth is as close to heaven as we'll ever get, and we are letting the Martians ruin it. They are going to destroy Earth like they destroyed Mars if we let them. Our survival rests in their hands for the time being. We have a picture of what the Martians look like. No worthy Martians. Let's see if I recognize any of them. Okay, that was Carl Odom's manifesto. Thanks for watching.